everyone. Welcome back to She Blurs Podcast. Today's guest is Jennifer Lieberman. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? Good. Welcome to my podcast. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to chat with you today. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Definitely. So I am a Canadian. I am from Maple, Canada. Yes, the place sounds made <laughs> up, but that's where I'm from. The streets flow with maple syrup as we canoe down them for work and school. <laughs> I heard Canadians have like the best maple syrup and it's like not the syrup they have over here, but like the good syrup. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just pure, you know, when you buy maple syrup. Okay, so a, a, a note about maple syrup. When you buy maple syrup, you just want to buy something that's 100% maple syrup. That's it. That's all you need in it. You don't need high fructose corn syrup. You don't need any fillers. But um, maple syrup is actually super expensive. So yes. that's why a lot of companies like put other fillers and stuff in it. So yeah. okay, no wonder it's so expensive. It's like fifteen dollars for a bottle. I'm like fifteen dollars for syrup. <laughs> yes, yeah. But also maple syrup is because it's natural. It's actually like better than sugar. Yeah. You know, or it, like, you know, you know how people will have like agave or honey instead of sugar. Well, in Canada, we'll do maple syrup. Like I put it in my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try that. I'm definitely going to try that. <laughs> yeah. So what does your family think about your uh, books you've written? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, you know, my you know, my mom actually loves them and she's super supportive. Like my dad is another story because my stuff's a little racy and he hasn't read any of it. So he just kind of, you know, um, has like a knee jerk reaction to my stuff. <laughs> but uh, but he did come to one of the film festivals one of my films was in and he really enjoyed it. I actually have a really funny story. <laughs> so um, my first short film, so I'm, I'm an author, I'm a writer, I have a book. Um, I have a novel and a couple of how-to books, but I started writing theatrically. So my novel was initially a play. It was a one woman show before it was actually a book. And I played all the characters. I was on stage by <laughs> myself and I played 10 characters. Wow. Um, like in the movie La La Land, if you remember like Emma Stone's character, she did this like one woman show to try and invite like agents and people to hire her, but like nobody really showed up. Yeah, <laughs> I did that. I did that years before the movie ever came out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, and but but also I kept going with it. I didn't just do it that one time. So I refined it over a couple of years and ended up getting to go to New York and winning an award for it, which was super, super exciting. And um, but anyway, let's fast forward, because the funny story that I want to tell is about my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> and he so I made a film called Leash. And it's not about a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so um it's a very kind of provocative erotic thriller okay. and i it's a short film i wrote it and i produced it i was in it and i hired someone to direct it you know hired a whole crew to help me make it and we ended up getting into the short film corner at the Cannes film festival in the south of france which is like a big deal. <laughs> it was like really crazy. My mom is from Tunisia, Africa, okay. and her whole family lives in France. Like my grandparents' siblings basically all immigrated to France when they left Tunisia. And for some reason, my grandparents are like, eh, we're going to go to Canada. <laughs> like, let's go, <laughs> let's hop across the Atlantic instead. <laughs> like, let's go somewhere where we don't know anybody and we don't speak the language. <laughs> so that's what my grandparents did. So, um, so, you know, the entertainment world in general is an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. And Finally, like I do something where my family's like, oh, wow, oh my goodness, she got into the Cannes Film Festival. And 
my grandfather, you know, he's been to the south of France and stuff um, because his relative, you know, he'd go and see relatives there and stuff. So everyone in France, there was like this huge buzz that like the relative from Canada got a, a piece. So my grandfather wanted to come. Uh oh. <laughs> And I was like, because <laughs> of course my mom was coming with me. Of course, mama's coming. So she's like, you know, I'm not great at talking about myself. So I brought my mama, my best friend to talk about me to everybody. So I didn't have to do it. Um, and I said to my mom, I'm like, Pepe can come, but he is not coming to see my film. He's not. Like it's not happening. And, <laughs> and we get to the festival. So in order to get into the festival and into the grounds, you need credentials. Like you need your pass and your, you know, you need all, all of your stuff. So I was able to like lie and say my mom was my manager. And since my best friend had produced my one woman show, I was able to say that she was a producer and my mom was a manager. So I was able to like fudge it and get them credentials, even though neither of them are in the film industry. Um, <laughs> but I was like, my gra like my granddad's like, you know, like an 88 year old man. Like what, what am I gonna say he does? <laughs> So, you know, and I like, and I tell my mother, like, we already like made this deal, like, Pepe can come to the south of France, he's not coming to the festival, he's not coming to see my film, like, it's not happening. I can't get him credentials. It's just, so my mom goes to pick up her credentials. And she brings my grandfather with. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't have a pass for him. And she's like, well, you have to at least show him that you tried, you know, like let the people who work at the festival turn him away. Like yeah. you can't tell him he can't go, go in line and try. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So we're in line. My mom gets her passes. I'm standing with my grandfather. We get to the window and I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jen from Maple Mermaid Productions. I need to get some credentials for Mr. Cohen. And um, and the guy at the counter is like, Julie Phil, it's Julianne. We were talking in the email. I, I remember you. <laughs> so, of course, out of all the kiosks and all the possibilities of people, <laughs> I end up with Julianne, who I had been corresponding with because I had to send him all the fake information to get my mom and my best friend their credentials. <laughs> so I already sent him a whole bunch of like fake resumes and fake <laughs> press releases to get my mom and my best friend the stuff. <clears throat> so... Of course, it happens to be that guy. And he's like, oh, yeah, Jennifer, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, I need to get some credentials. Um, I didn't say it was for my grandfather. And he's like, OK, well, what does he do? What does he do in the, you know, in the films? And I just look at my grandfather. And I look at Julian. And I'm like, financier? <laughs> So Pepe got credentials. We got Pepe his credentials. And I was like, okay, mom, he can, he can like schmooze around the festival. He can come to the pavilions. Like all the, all the different countries have like pavilions set up and they talk about their um, like tax breaks and incentives of why you should come film in their country and what, what everyone's got going on, you know, and everyone has cocktail parties and it's a schmooze fest for like two weeks. And my film is like a week away, you know, the first week of the festival, I, I was just schmoozing. And then the second week I had my screening and I'm like, okay, like he can come to the cocktail parties. Like, that's fine. That's not a big deal. He's not coming to see my film. He is not. It's about a leash and not with a dog. <laughs> you know, long story short, we get to the day of the screening. I get to the Palais de Film, and my 
mother standing there with my grandfather. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what is happening? Like, Pepe is not coming to see the film. And she's like, well, I couldn't leave him alone in the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I hate you, Ma. I hate you so much. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> well, he didn't. He didn't say anything because he didn't know what was happening. <laughs> you know. Meanwhile, because it's a racy piece, I didn't just get business cards made. I got. I ordered custom condom packages. <laughs> with the film title and logo so like i'm giving out like you know a thousand condoms to strangers all over the festival like on the dl so pippa didn't see my stack of condoms <laughs> that's hilarious that's <laughs> it's like a whole other element man <laughs> so anyway so pippa comes i'm like I'm already a wreck, you know, I'm already a wreck because this is like my first real film that I made, you know, and it's already like a big enough, you know, like mind, you know, mind trip that like I'm there with my own film and then I've got Pepe. <laughs> but Pepe actually, after he watched it, he loved it. So Pepe grew up in Tunisia and he went to the movies every Saturday as a little boy. And that was his thing. Like growing up as a little boy, every single Saturday he went to the movies and it didn't matter if it was the same movie because a lot of times the movie houses would, you know, for several weeks would only have one film. So he is like one of the biggest film buffs that I know, like <laughs> film aficionados. And he really, he's like, this is such a beautiful movie. Like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I don't know if it's beautiful. <laughs> but he That's actually, he saw the film and he turned into my number one fan. Wow. That's awesome. He, <laughs> That's yeah. Great. And he turned into my number one fan. And sadly, my grandma passed away while I was still in Europe. Um, Pepe's wife, Meme. And I went home and I took some time off and I was home for several months, um, you know, helping my mom, helping pack up my grandmother's things, stuff like that. And at a certain point, out of everyone in my family, it was Pepe who came to me. And he's like, what are you doing? You need to, you need to go back to Los Angeles and you need to make more of your movies. Like, what are you doing here? you know, you got to get back, you got to get back to your life. And a month after that, he says to me, are we going to go to Cannes again? <laughs> He's like, because I'm getting old. And I don't know how many years I'm going to have left. And I want to go to the festival again. And I'm like, I'm like, Pepe, like, it's, it's the middle of October. Like, I, I, I'm not, I don't have a movie. I don't have anything. And the deadline for the submission is like end of January, beginning of, beginning of February, mm -hmm. you know, so to have something ready, usually you would be at least planning your shoot by October. Yeah. Um, I ended up going to a creative workshop and met some people there and a woman is like, hey, I'd love to produce something. Do you have a short film? Yeah. We shot, I, I shot my second short film in January, in January of 2018 and had it ready to submit by the, the end of the month or the beginning of February. And I made the deadline and we got in again. So I got to take Pepe for a second time <laughs> to the Cannes Film Festival. And it was another racy, you know, kind of erotic piece, but at least he, he knew what he was up for that time. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's, That's great support though. Like this yeah. really good support. Yeah. Especially when you're older. It's, wow. Yeah. So, so can you give our listeners like a brief summary of your two books um, that revolve around your executive and business coaching? Oh, sure. Yes. So the first one is called Make Your Own Break, How to Record and Publish Your Audiobook in Seven Simple Steps. Yeah. And basically during the lockdown, 
I recorded my own audiobook and I messed up a lot. Like a lot. <laughs> like I had to start all over again from the beginning and record the whole book a second time. So a colleague of mine who suggested I record the book. I, I have to stop talking to this friend. Do you ever have a friend that every time you talk to her, she gives you more work to do, but it's yes. not work that she's going to pay you for? <laughs> you know? She's like, oh, you should record your audio book. And then I did. And then I had to do it a second time. And I told her how much trouble I had. She's like, oh, you should write a how-to book because now you know how to tell other people how to do it. <laughs> so, um, so that's what I did, and I basically learned so much from all of mistake, all the mistakes I made and stumbled through that I put together a very short, very concise seven-step guide for authors, and it's specifically for authors to read their own piece, um, because there are lots of services out there, like through ACX, where you can find you know, an actor or somebody to read it for you. But a lot of people, especially if it's a memoir, um, you're kind of the best person to read your story. Mm -hmm. So this is specifically for for authors. And it was fabulous because this friend actually teaches a few uh, university classes, college classes about writing. So now my book is on her uh, recommended reading list. So that's nice. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, her name's Stacy Damalski, the memoir midwife. So for anybody out there who's looking to write uh, write their memoir but doesn't know where to start, she's got amazing resources on her website, thememoirmidwife.com. Um, she doesn't pay me to say that. I just really, <laughs> she helped me so much through the journey of publishing my first book that anybody who's about to embark on their on their first book or their first publishing journey, she's a great resource, um, you know, and she's got a lot of free resources on the website too. So, um, and then the second book, uh, because of my um, performance and filmmaking background, at the beginning of the lockdown, I have a friend who's an executive coach who asked me to coach some of his clients because they found that they were struggling to manage their team via Zoom. And they were either struggling to manage the team or to um, have effective presentations or sales presentations, things like that. Mm -hmm. So the second book is how to master your virtual meeting in okay. seven simple steps. And it covers simple things like how to frame up your camera in terms of like eye line, you know, so to raise your device so the camera is in line with your eyes as opposed to looking up at you and having part of the ceiling in the shot or looking down at you, you know, just <laughs> angles, um, how to curate your background, things like that. Um, and then also just some performance techniques that we use as actors in order to have an effective presentation. So um, that was the second one. And it came from actually working with individuals because before I, before I started, I was like, oh, I've never done this before. I need to write some <laughs> notes. And as I was writing my, my, my notes, I came up with like seven steps and I was like, okay, this is okay. <laughs> You know, I was once I once I kind of wrote that that stuff down. I was like, okay, now I feel confident that I can coach somebody because it's something I had never done before. Like I've coached people with acting, I've directed, I've produced, I've done a whole bunch of stuff in the theatrical world, but I've never I had never worked with executives. So, um, so yeah, and then after working with a couple of people, that gave me the confidence to be like, oh, I really kind of can help a lot of people with this, and then I wrote that second book. And once again, it's just a very short guide. It's not like this huge involved thing. I tried to keep it as concise as possible because everybody's busy. Nobody needs a whole bunch of, you know, I didn't need to like puff it up with like stories and whatever. Like I was, it's just very kind of brass tacks, straightforward. This is what you got to do. So wow. those are the two make and make your own break is my um, consulting business. So I put them under that umbrella. Wow. So on your website, we could find the lady you was talking about the first time, the one that helps you with books, writing books. 
Oh, the memoir midwife. I actually don't have a link to her on my website, but I should now that you mention it. <laughs> um, so her name is Stacy Demalski and her website is thememoirmidwife.com. And her book is also called The Memoir Midwife. It's available on Amazon and everywhere books are sold. Oh, okay, okay. So how long um, have you been coaching? So in terms of the executive coaching, just about a year, just, I started like a couple months into the lockdown when people realized they weren't going back to the office so quickly. Wow. And, and when you look, oh, go ahead. <laughs> and then in terms of acting coaching, I've been an acting coach for over 10 years now. Wow. That's amazing. So how many movies, like how many movies have you produced? Oh, okay. So I produce independent film and independent theater. So at this point about over 40 wow. independent film and theater productions. I've produced independent theater in Toronto, New York, Los Angeles, Australia. I used to run a theater company in the East Village in New York City, and that's kind of how I got my start. And then I, from there, I got an opportunity to produce an independent film, and that's what took me out to LA once the film won some awards in Los Angeles. Wow. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a combination of independent feature films, short films, web series, music videos. Nice. So can we watch any of these movies on like Tubi or anything? Um, so Saturday morning uh, is available. I think it's available on like Amazon and Netflix. My web series, Dump Water Divas, is on YouTube. Um, a bunch of the music videos are on YouTube. Um, there's some stuff on Vimeo. I have links to everything on my website. If you go to jenniferliebermanactor.com, if oh. you go to the producer page, mm -hmm. I have, um, I have, uh, the posters mm -hmm. and I think all the posters have links to the projects. Wow. That's amazing. So I want to thank you so much, Jennifer, for coming on my show and speaking about your producing and your book and being a business coach. Yes. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun chatting. <laughs> you have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. I want to thank you so much for listening to my interview with Jennifer. So if you would like to view her books and any information about her you can go to the link that i have below it's called um make your own make your own break com and it's linked below so if you want to check out any of her novels or her books or her business coaching or any in, any information about her then you can go on there and check that out i want to thank you all so much for supporting my podcast and for listening to my interviews I greatly appreciate it so, so much. Have a great day.